Art is subjective. Now, guys, it should be absolutely no surprise. Like what I just said, art is subjective. That is not, that should be something you know. Like I say that and you go, uh-huh, yep, Jake, you're correct. But I've been having a lot of interesting feelings lately. And I think maybe this is just a journal entry for me, but I do genuinely think there are people out there who will benefit from some of what I have to say, which is that art is subjective. And again, you know that, but I don't think you do because even I don't think that I know that. But here's the funny thing. Even though we all know art is subjective, even though I know art is subjective, sometimes I don't feel like I'm making art. And I definitely think there's an argument that I'm not. And this whole thought process in my gray matter was really kicked off because I just did an episode of the editing guests, which I've been having so much fun doing, uh, with Schaefer Nickel. If you haven't watched Schaefer, first of all, go watch all of his stuff or go watch the conversation we had. It's great. It was so much fun. Schaefer's the coolest guy. And really, he falls into a category of people that I hold in my brain, in my mind, in my soul as a true artist. And the funny thing is, is again, everything is subjective. So everyone's true artist changes all of the time. But, you know, Schaefer is one of them. Gox is another. Jesse Driftwood. I mean, again, I've talked, <laughs> I've talked to a lot of people that I literally hold in the esteem of true artists. And I think the funniest thing about this whole sentiment is I don't even really know how I would define a true artist, but I really just like, like when I list off those people, if you know those people, you maybe kind of know where I'm coming from. And again, I've been thinking about this so much because lately I, I just don't feel like I'm making art like that. And for the longest time in the six years that I've been doing this, YouTube journey that really just feels like it's starting. I've always felt like I was never making art and I always felt like I was looking up to people who, who were making art. And I think that in my head, I had built it up that because I wasn't making art, that's why things weren't working out. That's why I wasn't happy. That's why, you know, it just didn't feel like everything was aligned both on how I felt about what I was making on YouTube into the camera, but also what I think I thought I should feel when I make stuff. But here's the funny thing that totally shifted my brain because I thought that there was kind of this unfulfillment from not making again this like artsy stuff, this true art, is that lately I feel less like an artist than I ever have. I mean, really right now on the channel, we're talking about editing, which again, I know is an art form. I know it's an art form and we're getting there, but bear with me. <laughs> On the channel, we're talking about editing, we're having conversations with other editors, we're breaking down people's videos and, you know, talking about the art and the editing of it and all of that. And so I guess the packaging of it, the me just sitting here sharing my screen or talking to someone else and talk, you know, having, asking them questions, you know, it, to me, it just doesn't feel anything even remotely like a Gox video. Therefore, it doesn't feel like art. I think I would still make that argument and I, I think you would too. I think you would say, well, yeah, Jake, that's not art. Or maybe you would, it's subjective. But if I was to reach out and tap on the camera, tap on the glass, here's the thing that has changed my perspective forever. Personally, I have never felt more away from making art than ever before. But ironically, on the flip side, personally, I have never felt more 
excited and fulfilled with what I've been doing on the internet with a camera ever. And so naturally you can imagine you're probably asking the same question I was asking myself is how can I not be making art this thing that I've held at such high esteem for so long and feel that way, but then also be so fulfilled and so stoked on what I'm doing. Like how, how are these existing, coexisting at the same time? It, it literally makes no sense. And again, I think that's where it clicked for me is that you can do something that fulfills you that maybe isn't art. Maybe you don't think it's art. Maybe someone else does. That's kind of irrelevant, but you can do something that you yourself or you don't hold up to as art and still love the shit out of it. Quick little tangent, I do think there is an art form to a fantastic conversation. I do think there is an art form to a good breakdown edit to keep you guys interested, to teach you information, to say, hey, this is how Andreas does this art and there's art behind how I'm packaging that and I want to improve on that art for sure. I know that, I feel that, but it doesn't feel like Gox art, this art that I've held at this level that is unattainable, right? So the takeaway I've been having lately and what I think, I hope someone gets something from this video is that art is subjective, but fulfillment is also subjective. And just because you like something or just because you're inspired by something or you watch something or you hold something to a standard that you think you would like, that may not be your purpose. Now, not indefinitely, this is not like your purpose for what you do on this earth, but maybe at the time, the zeitgeist, the muse that you have, that might not be your thing. Me, Jake, Jake Felzine, I love Gox videos. I love breaking them down. I love seeing the art and the attention to detail. I love Jesse Driftwood videos. I love Jake Frew videos. I love Schaefer Nickel videos. I love, you know, Chris Howe, Peter McKinnon. I mean, just the list goes on and on and on of all of these people that I love. But maybe, just maybe, my muse, my art right now is not to make what those people are making. And having that realization has freed me. It has, it has freed my mind to this world that is Jake being the nerdy editing dad, asking people about editing, asking people about their art, how did they do it, breaking down how people do their art and trying to package and create that and share that knowledge and get stoked on that and, and give people those digital virtual high fives and fist bumps and, you know, hell yeahs. That that is me right now. That is my muse. That is what I feel so strongly right now. And I think that if you're watching this, that could be you. You might love Gox like I do. You might love Jesse like I do. You might love Schaefer like I do. But that doesn't mean you need to do what they're doing as a complex human being with lots to give this world. You can love things that people are doing and do something completely different. And again, it's such an obvious realization. Art is subjective, but it has truly been the biggest change in my life creatively. So again, I hope someone got something from this, but if you're still here, you're obviously one of the real ones. Thank you guys. I appreciate you so much. Obviously we're all about editing. Hit that subscribe button, go leave a comment, tell me what you guys think about this. Um, and then yeah, maybe go check out one of these badass conversations that I had with one of my new editing friends. So with that, see you guys. I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next one.